Nestled off the north coast of Australia are the Tiwi Islands. They're home to an amazingly reliable afternoon thunderstorm. It's so reliable in fact that it has a name. Hector the Convector. The Hector thunderstorms are going to be the subject of a number of videos on this channel. In this video we're going to look at two recent Hector examples to demonstrate a couple of basic but really important weather concepts with the aid of some uh, time-lapse videos. The first concept is that warm air rises when surrounded by cooler air. It sounds so simple, but understanding this allows us to develop our view of the thunderstorm. That is because a growing thunderstorm is exactly this. Simply put, a large amount of warmer air rising through surrounding cooler air. It's the same reason why hot air balloons rise up. Simply because warm air is less dense and so weighs less than cooler air. The second concept is that clouds are usually pushed in the same direction as the wind. The difference in winds at different levels of the troposphere is known as wind shear, and knowing the wind shear can help predict when thunderstorms will die quickly or when they'll last for hours, produce tornadoes, massive hail and other devastating weather. Strong wind shear can also cause the entire destruction of hurricanes by tearing them apart. The reason why a bit of wind shear is important for thunderstorms can be understood by thinking about where the cool rain will fall out of the thunderstorm. In a case where there is weak wind shear, the thunderstorm grows vertically because there is little wind to push the cloud in any direction. The cloud generates rain that then falls back out through the core of the storm. The rain brings cooler air back down to the surface which can cut off the source of warm air that is feeding into the thunderstorm. This can effectively kill the thunderstorm quite rapidly. In the case where there is wind shear, the thunderstorm gets tilted and the rain falls out at a location displaced from where the warm energy filled air is entering. This allows warm air to continue to feed into the thunderstorm while the cool rainy air falls out elsewhere. Since the storm can now continue to receive warm air, it can continue to live its life wandering along vacuuming up new energy filled air. With these basics in mind, let's take a closer look at the Hector thunderstorm. The Tiwi Islands comprise Melville Island, Bathurst Island and some smaller uninhabited islands. Tucked against the giant landmass of Australia, they seem quite small, but they're actually quite substantial islands. The combined area of the Tiwi Islands is 8,320 square kilometres, making them 784 square kilometres smaller than Puerto Rico and 2,100 square kilometers larger than the current area of Palestine as determined by the CIA. This animation shows a simulation of the lifetime of a Hector thunderstorm. The colors are the surface temperature, and we start in the early hours of the morning when the islands are cooler than the surrounding ocean. The gray volume areas are simulated clouds. The islands start cool, but as the sun rises in the sky during the day, it heats the land much faster than the ocean, which is why, when down to the beach, we sometimes have to run fast over the hot sand to reach the cooler water. The sun also heats the surface of the earth much faster than the air above it. For the Tiwi Islands, this means that the air near the surface over the islands warms much faster during the day than both the surrounding ocean and the atmosphere above. Sea breezes develop and converge, and the near-surface warm air eventually explodes upwards through the troposphere, forming a Hector thunderstorm. As the air rises, it cools, but it cools at a rate that we can predict. So we can work out what the temperature of the rising air will be at any particular level in the atmosphere. Now, if we knew what the actual temperature was through all these layers of the atmosphere, 
then we could find out whether that rising air will be warmer or cooler than the air around it, and therefore whether it will continue to rise or stop rising. The way we find out what the temperature is through all these layers is by using one of the most valuable weather observation methods, the weather balloon. A weather balloon rises up through the atmosphere, measuring the temperature, moisture content, and the wind as it goes. The results are plotted on these confusing diagrams known as skew T's. The diagram covers a slab of atmosphere over 16 kilometers thick. The scale of the sounding diagram is discussed more in the three wind layers in a thunderstorm time-lapse video. You can see the balloon trace out two thick lines as it ascends. The line on the left is the dew point temperature. It tells us how dry the air is, but for the moment we're not going to be concerned about it, so just ignore it. What we're really interested in is what the balloon tells us about the air temperature, and that is traced out as the line on the right. Now since the air that is going to rise in the thunderstorm comes from near the surface, what we really need to know is what the temperature of that rising air will be compared to the air around it at all levels of the atmosphere. Now comes the trick. There is a third line, hard to see, drawn on this diagram. And it is this line that shows the hypothetical temperature that air lifted from the surface will have as it ascends through the troposphere. An explanation for why this occurs will be in a future video. But for the moment, all we need to know is that if this line is to the right of the actual temperature, it means that air rising from near the surface will be warmer than the air around it, and so will be less dense and more buoyant, and will therefore continue to rise. The section of the troposphere where this is the case is shaded in red, and this shows that through this entire slab of atmosphere, air rising from the surface in a cloudy convective plume could continue to ascend due to buoyancy. At the top, the red area ends, indicating that the air that has risen all the way from the surface will finally no longer be warmer than the air around it. For this reason, the air will struggle to rise any further and will then flatten and spread out. This is why a thunderstorm tends to have a flat top, known as the thunderstorm anvil, and it generally occurs at the boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere above. The next thing to look at are the winds measured as the balloon ascends. These are marked on the right of the diagram and show the direction that the winds are coming from and the speed of the winds. The speeds are indicated by the number of bars sticking out. The more, the stronger. Generally, this sounding indicates fairly weak winds throughout most of the troposphere. So this we're going to use as an example of weak wind shear. So for this example, let's take a look at the storm that developed in the afternoon over the Tiwi Islands. The time-lapse shows large thunderstorms first over Melville Island on the right and later over Bathurst Island on the left. Note how the storms rise vertically through the weak winds that we know exist throughout a large depth before it reaches the top of our red area and flattens out. The layer where the storm flattens is in the vicinity of the boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere, and it's nice to see the way the thunderstorm reveals this previously invisible but hugely significant lid in our atmosphere. The second case was on the 1st of December 2016. On this day there were fairly light winds down low, but above 5 kilometers the winds were stronger and out of the west. The time lapse looks north and so for this case we can see that the westerly upper level winds caused the thunderstorm to tilt to the right, showing the effect of the wind shear. 
The thunderstorm ended up traversing both Melville and Bathurst Islands over the course of a few hours. If you'd like to find your local weather balloon soundings, just Google weather soundings and select the University of Wyoming weather web link. Here you'll find drop down menus that allow you to select the area of the globe you're interested in. In the second drop down menu, select the GIF option and then you can select the time and date if you want an earlier sounding than the present one. If you see some interesting clouds one day and take a picture, why don't you send it to us? with your local weather balloon sounding via Facebook or Twitter, and it might feature at the end of a future video with you credited. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please subscribe and thanks for watching.